a format for dialogue and a platform for joint efforts to address common challenges faced by the United States and the five Central Asian republics. 30 years of successful bilateral relations is no small feat, and we have an esteemed group of high-level officials and experts with us today to mark this occasion and reflect on the progress that has been made as well as the challenges that lie ahead. To start us off, it is my great pleasure to introduce U.S. Assistant Secretary for South and Central Asia, Donald Liu, and Tajikistan's Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs, Farhad Salim, to provide keynote remarks. Donald Liu has served as the Assistant Secretary of State for the Bureau of South and Central Asian Affairs since September 2021. Prior to this assignment, he was U.S. Ambassador to the Kyrgyz Republic and the U.S. Ambassador to the Republic of Albania. He has a long and distinguished diplomatic career that includes postings in India, Azerbaijan, Pakistan, Georgia, and Kyrgyzstan. And I have the honor to have met Don on his very first posting to Peshawar in Pakistan uh, back in the early 1990s. Where Andrew introduced my wife. Where I did introduce Don to his wife, for which I take great credit, yes. Uh, uh, Farhad Salim was appointed Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Tajikistan by President Rahman in April 2021, after serving as Tajikistan's ambassador to the U.S. from 2014 to 2021, where we had the honor of hosting him at USIP as well. He also served as the head of the Europe and America Department of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and head of Division of Regional Organizations in the International Organizations Department. After their keynote addresses, we will have a panel discussion moderated by Dr. Gavin Helf, USIP Central Asia Senior Expert. And so without further ado, I'd like to invite Assistant Secretary Liu up to the podium. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Deputy Minister Salim, uh, Ambassador Hamar Lizada, Ambassador Hoagland, um, my old dear friend uh, John Mark Pamashim, my even older friend uh, Andrew Wilder, Mrs. Halimova, Mr. Mohammed Zada, Dr. Helf, dear colleagues. So I brought in a painting today, and I see Dick Hoagland here in the audience. He will remember these days. I bought this painting in on the streets of Dushanbe 20 years ago, and it has hung in my office for 20 years as a memory of the friendship between our two countries, and I'll explain why. Um, I, on that trip to Dushanbe, um, it was my first trip to, um, to Tajikistan, my first trip to the region, in fact. Um, I was accompanying my boss, uh, Ambassador John Byerly, who was the acting assistant secretary for the region. And even though it was my first trip to Tajikistan, it was not Ambassador Byerly's first trip. He had traveled to Dushanbe when Tajikistan was still part of the Soviet Union. Uh, John is a fluent Russian speaker and has been, uh, had been at that time, during the Soviet times, an exhibit guy, a young person who had just graduated from university, spoke Russian, and traveled throughout the Soviet Union talking about American culture and society with regular people. And on one of his stops as an exhibit guide, he visited Dushanbe, and as a young man, had the opportunity to talk to Tajik people and, and tell them a little about America. They had questions about American food, about American music, and American genes. Uh, he was the first foreigner that many uh, of his new Tajik friends had ever met, and he was an exotic American. When I visited Dushanbe 20 years ago, I also felt this tremendous sense of hospitality. Um, I, I remember Tajikistan at that time was barely 10 years old. There were still bullet holes in the government buildings left from the Civil War. There were no fancy hotels or big shopping malls. People were so generous to us with their bread and their tea and their incredible plov. Um, I, I have a very strong memory of having visited the Varzab River near Dushanbe and enjoying fresh grilled fish with newfound friends. It's a really magical experience for me and something that I will remember my whole life. Uh, I'm honored to join you today to celebrate this 30th anniversary of our warm relations between our two great nations. Uh, we have accomplished so much 
in 30 years. I'll give you some examples. Um, we have worked together to make Tajikistan a safer place to, um, with a project to clear landmines from 70 square kilometers of Tajik land that can now safely be reclaimed for homes and for farms. We have worked together to fight COVID-19 with 2.8 million doses of vaccines donated by the U.S. and distributed so effectively by the Tajik Ministry of Health. And we have worked through USAID on installing a new 200 kilowatt Mergob solar power plant. Now, it's the first solar power plant in Tajikistan, but it's also the highest elevation solar power plant in the world. And finally, we have uh, supported education programs together um, through our colleagues at USAID that have reached 90% of all of the schools across this beautiful country. We have had a tremendous first 30 years together. I am looking forward to returning to Dushanbe, hopefully this summer, with my colleague Brian Stimler, who's here in the audience with me, uh, for our annual bilateral consultations. I'm looking forward to seeing all the changes that have happened over the past 20 years, and I'm looking forward to having some of the best plov and the freshest fish on the planet. Thank you all very much. Congratulations on 30 years. And I'd now like to welcome the Deputy Foreign Minister joining us from Dushanbe, uh, Farhad Salim. Over to you. Hey, Donald Blue, distinguished colleagues. First of all, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to the U.S. Institute of Peace for organizing today's event, marking the 30th anniversary of the establishment of bilateral diplomatic relations between our countries. Last year, Tajikistan celebrated its 30th anniversary of state independence. And on this occasion, the President of the Republic of Tajikistan, His Excellency Emum Ali Rahman, in his speech has mentioned, I quote, I would like to emphasize that it was not an easy for the glorious Tajik people to achieve this happy day the celebration of 30th anniversary of independence and freedom. And the greatest achievement of this period, peace and tranquility, political stability and national unity. We all together have gone through threats, incredibly difficult trials and the challenges over the past 30 years in order to achieve these happy, victorious moments." Unquote. Distinguished colleagues, we are grateful to our partners and friends who supported us, collaborated with us during these 30 years to overcome the security and economic challenges. Still, much needs to be done. A lot of work is ahead of us, but we are confident with the dedicated people and reliable partners, we will have more prosperous future. Tajikistan highly values the bilateral cooperation with the United States of America and stands ready to do its utmost to strengthen further the two countries' relations for the benefit of our people. With regard to the importance of the, our bilateral relations with the United States of America, the president of Tajikistan, the leader of the nation, on his address to the parliament has noted, quote, issues of strengthening and expanding multilateral cooperation with our development partners such as the United States of America, remain as a priority of foreign policy of our country." Unquote. The Open Doors foreign policy determined by our president will be indeed implemented by us, diplomats, in cooperation with our partners. Taking this opportunity, I would like to also thank the U.S. Agency for International Development for their implementation of the programs and projects in the areas of financial management improving investment climate, improving cross-border trade and transit, democratic institutions, agriculture, education, and healthcare. Distinguished friends, when the new United States strategy for the Central Asia 2019-2025 was introduced, it was clear that our visions are similar on many important issues, such as to build a more stable and prosperous 
Central Asia that is free to pursue political, economic, and security interests with a variety of partners on our own terms and connected to the global markets and open to international investment. It is true that a stable and secure region of Central Asia contributes directly to your efforts to counter terrorism, support regional stability, promote energy security, and enhance economic prosperity in the region and beyond. Distinguished colleagues, 30 years of US-Tajikistan partnership. What is next now? When 9-11 happened, Tajikistan immediately expressed its support and provided its infrastructure to the inter international coalition and partners to fight against international terrorism. Now, 20 years later, we are still sharing the longest border with the challenges and threats of terrorism, drug trafficking, and organized crime. We highly appreciate the U.S. support provided to our law enforcement agencies over the years on strengthening our borders to prevent drug trafficking and terrorism. Moreover, we want to strengthen our economic ties, attract more investment, and increase our trade with the most advanced economy of the globe. And this goal can be achieved much easier and faster if our financial institutions could have access to the corresponding accounts in the U.S. financial institutions. This basic access could provide favorable environment for our businesses and supportive of our broader development goals. Three decades of the partnership have been built on our shared goal of sovereign, independence, and prosperity. Over the coming years, let's continue our collaboration to reinforce border security and regional stability, combat the climate crisis, spur economic growth, education, increase the effectiveness of institutions, promote prosperity, and enhance our partnership. I thank each and every one of you. Thank you. It's wonderful to be back uh, in this lovely building. Uh, my name is Gavin Helf, and I'm senior expert uh, on Central Asia here at USIP. Um, welcome to the beginning of the new hybrid uh, reality. Uh, I'm, we're, we are testing out uh, a panel that includes the best of what we've learned over the last two years about Zoom and virtual with a real panel uh, in real time. Our virtual audience out there can take part in today's discussion by asking a question using the chat box function located just below the video player on the USIP event page. For those joining in person, uh, please write your questions on index cards and my colleagues will collect them uh, later in the discussion for me. Um, we've got a great panel joining us today here uh, and online from Dushanbe. I'll moderate by asking a series of questions to each of the panelists, um, and our panelists can feel free to respond to each other's uh, answers. Uh, after a round of two or two of this, we'll turn to your questions. Um, but first, it's my great pleasure to introduce our panelists. Uh, ambassador John Palmershine was appointed as United States Ambassador to Tajikistan in January of 2019. He previously served as Deputy Chief of Mission at the U.S. Embassy in Astana, Kazakhstan. Prior to Kazakhstan, he served as Director of the Caucasus Affairs and Regional Conflicts at the State Department's Bureau of European and Eurasian Affairs. In his Foreign Service career, he has served in a wide variety uh, of positions in Washington and worked in embassy political sections in Japan, China, Belarus, and Germany. He also served as a U.S. Consul General in Vladivostok, Russia. Uh, prior to joining the Foreign Service, Ambassador Palmerstein worked for CNN uh, in Moscow. Uh, ambassador Farouk Hamradi Zoda served as ambassador has served as ambassador to the Republic of, of uh, the ambassador of the Republic of Tajikistan in the United States since December of 2020. He served in numerous leadership capacities throughout his career, including chairman of the Tajikistan State Committee on Investments and State Property Management and chairman of the Accounts Chamber. Uh, ambassador Hamradi Zoda was minister of Economic Development and Trade uh, from 2009 to 2012. Uh, 
Zora Harimova uh, has over 20 years' experience working on post-conflict transitions from 1996 to 2016. She was executive director of the Open Society Institute uh, Association Foundation in Tajikistan. Since then, she's worked as a consultant for the World Bank, the European Union, GIZ, Internews Network, and the Institute for Integrated Transitions. And finally, Paris uh, Muhammad Azoda uh, is deputy director of the Center for Strategic Research under the President of the Republic of Tajikistan. He has held numerous high-level positions with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Tajikistan, including as First Secretary of the Asian Division, First Secretary of the Secretariat, and First Secretary of the Asia-Pacific Division of the Asia-Africa Department. Prior to joining the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Parviz was a faculty member at Tajik National University in numerous capacities, including as acting head of the Department of Diplomacy and Foreign Policy. All right, so I'm going to start this off uh, with some questions that I'm going to uh, ask John Palmerschein uh, first uh, to, to um, uh, help us understand a little bit about the context. You know, the, the situation in Tajikistan when I first visited there uh, after the collapse of the Soviet Union was one where um, uh, they were just coming out of a civil war. The U.S. presence in, in Dushanbe was was limited. Um, I remember meeting uh, ambassadors to Tajikistan who were resident in Almaty. And of course, after 9/11. Uh, the entire relationship shifted to address um, the issues around America's involvement in uh, Afghanistan. So, Ambassador Palmerschein, how do you see the overall security and economic relationship with Tajikistan evolving in the future, given all the tectonic geopolitical shifts in the region that have occurred in your time as ambassador in the last year or so? Well, thank, thank you very much, uh, uh, Gavin, and thank you to USIP and to the uh, Embassy of Tajikistan, uh, Ambassador Hamar Leozoda. It's very good to see you on the screen. Uh, Ambassador Salim, uh, nice to see you as well, even though you're just across town also on the screen. So the technology does seem to be working, uh, which is a good thing. And it's that's always, uh, that's always a question, as was alluded to earlier. Uh, but um, I think... Uh, uh, in, in terms of context, uh, you know, I think uh, both uh, you, Gavin, and Ambassador Liu uh, pointed out uh, the incredible progress that Tajikistan has made over the last 30 years in terms of its development, in terms of economic development, uh, and in terms of its uh, relations uh, with the rest of the world. And as a matter of fact, uh, you know, since, you know, the Civil War, Don mentioned the, the Civil War. Um, it, it really hasn't been a full 30 years, right? I mean, if you look at sort of quality years that Tajikistan has had in order to accomplish its goals, uh, it's not 30. It's, uh, you know, it's closer to 20 uh, because of what Tajikistan had to deal with in the 1990s. And so really some of the progress is, is, uh, is quite incredible. But uh, Gavin, your question was more specifically related to security uh, and uh, economic partnerships. And uh, I would say for the United States, uh, the security aspect of U.S.-Tajikistan relations has been, has been at the forefront of what we've been doing with Tajikistan over the last uh, 30 years uh, or so. Uh, and uh, Tajikistan uh, faces a number of uh, very serious security challenges. Um, uh, by tectonic shifts, uh, I, I assume you are referring to uh, events of last year and the U.S. US withdrawal from Afghanistan. Uh, Ambassador Salim uh, mentioned the 1,300-plus uh, uh, length, uh, uh, longest uh, border uh, long, uh, with Afghanistan of any country in Central Asia. And uh, so we have focused a lot of our efforts uh, in trying to help Tajikistan ensure the security of its borders uh, as a cornerstone of our cooperation. And obviously, at the heart of what we're doing and as a, at the heart of our Central Asia strategy is to support Tajikistan's sovereignty, territorial integrity, and independence. And the ability to manage its own borders uh, for a country is key. Uh, to doing that. And our commitment in this area will, will continue. Uh, we've got an additional $60 million in security assistance uh, budgeted for the next uh, two years. 
Uh, and uh, we are undertaking a number of very significant projects right now along the Tajikistan-Afghanistan border. For example, I would just mention uh, the uh, Tajik uh, in, the, in, the, in the corner area down where the Tajik, Afghan, and Uzbek borders meet uh, in a place called Ivaj. Uh, we are building a border guard detachment headquarters uh, that will help Tajikistan uh, patrol that area uh, and beyond uh, that will house 900 officers and family members uh, f uh, f for the uh, Tajikistan uh, border guard. So that, that's in the context of our overall assistance, which is, of course extends much broader than just the security front. And uh, the figure that we, are, we, we like to, to cite is uh, in terms of what we've done uh, over the years, uh, in terms of development, humanitarian, security assistance, over these last 30 years, it's been about $1.8 billion, which is a very significant investment. Um, and then very briefly, uh, uh, to the second part of your question, on the economic front, um, one, of the, one of the, I think, big achievements of the last 30 years was our work with the United States government's work with the government of Tajikistan to see Tajikistan accede to the WTO, the World Trade Organization. Uh, and that was a real milestone. And um, uh, right now, of course, um, we are dealing with uh, the situation in Ukraine. Uh, we know uh, that uh, Tajikistan has concerns about the potential impact of the sanctions. Uh, the sanctions were designed uh, and intended to mitigate consequences on, third, uh, on um, other countries, such as Tajikistan. But the reality is the Tajik and the Russian economies are very intertwined. So uh, we have uh, further work to do there and further consultation to do there to make sure that uh, Tajikistan is not uh, disadvantaged. Um, but our overall effort on the economic front uh, over the years has been to promote economic growth and regional connectivity. Uh, and uh, so that has been a big focus, including in the C5 plus one mechanism. And also, we've also worked very closely with our Tajik partners on uh, the foreign investment climate uh, to, uh, to try to engage with our partners uh, to try to create, uh, to help Tajikistan create the, the kind of cl climate that would in attract more U.S. investment uh, and investment from other parts of the globe uh, to Tajikistan. And uh, we can we can get into uh, you know, perhaps later uh, further discussion of what those what those uh, areas uh, uh, might be. But uh, I, as one example, I would just. Uh, Note that the, uh, there's been a, quite a bit of effort undertaken recently in Dushanbe on the tax code, and the, and the World Bank has been uh, very much involved in that reform process. And we're hopeful that those reforms will be successful, because that's one of the areas that U.S. business, uh, when, they, uh, when they talk to us, that they, they cite as one area which would be very helpful uh, to them. Uh, in terms of reforms, in terms of the ability to have uh, additional investment and additional economic activity uh, occurring between the United States and the Republic of Tajikistan. Uh, thanks, John. Now, I, I want to turn to Ambassador Hamar Lizoda. Um, some around town, uh, and I have certainly heard it uh, in the last seven or eight months, a concern uh, that um, the United States is leaving uh, Central Asia or has forgotten about Central Asia uh, in the post-Afghanistan era, um, and it's shifting its priorities to other places. So I want to ask you, Ambassador, why is continued United States engagement in the Central Asia region and with Tajikistan so important? Thank you, uh, dear Mr. Hell. Dear Vice President, uh, Mr. Wilder, Deputy Minister, Mr. Salim, Assistant Secretary, Mr. Lu, Ambassador, Mr. Pomersham, and esteemed colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen, before answer to question, I would like to say is I'm honored to extend my gratitude to the United States Institute of Peace for hosting us to the event dedicated to 30th anniversary 
of USA Tajikistan diplomatic relations. Uh, Honorable Mr. Lu, let me extend my sincere gratitude to the government of the United States of America for their hospitality and their continuous three decades of fruitful cooperation. Uh, I wish to uh, also mention today uh, another important milestone, the 30th anniversary of independence of Tajikistan, and express my gratitude to the U.S. partners and friends for celebrating with us in 2021. So why is the continued U.S. engagement in the Tajikistan, in the region, important? In fact, it's important from, from the global, regional, and the country perspective. Uh, globally, people and the governments all over the world recognized uh, the importance and necessity of solidarity in response not only to COVID, but other global challenges. And uh, we have deliberately assumed vital security tasks, as, uh, such as uh, countering terrorism and extremism, drug and armed trafficking, organized crime, as well as illegal migration that are rapidly intensifying nowadays. Tajikistan remains committed to continue prevention there for the spread, but uh, transnational and the transregional nature of them required us taking joint action. From the regional perspective, uh, Tajikistan is always in favor of constructive and uh, based on friendship, good neighborliness, mutual respect and trust, cooperation with countries in the region. And it should be noted that in addition to the negative consequences of the pandemic, impact of the unforeseen factors has significantly intensified, multiply existing and emerging risks in our region, as mentioned today, Deputy Minister and uh, Mr. Pomersheim. The economic and social spheres in Tajikistan are negatively impacted, and uh, therefore cooperation and support from the United States and international financial institutions is crucial. The previous speakers already mentioned very important mutually beneficial areas and joint projects and the programs implemented in priority sectors in Tajikistan. Today, the country continues international, institutional, economic, and social reform, as well as integrated into regional and global institutional processes. We are genuinely interested on the strengthening economic and investment ties with the United States of America. One of the main priorities in strengthening business relations between Tajikistan and the United States and diversification of trade and investment structure. Notably, modern technology and the global development created condition for entirely different format of economic cooperation and business investments. Despite COVID restriction, effective dialogue platforms have been established between our countries Tajikistan, uh, pleased to note that one of the most effective platforms is U.S.-Tajikistan Business Council, President of this council, Mr. Philippe de Leon, present here. And uh, we note with satisfaction the increased interest for mutually beneficial cooperation between American companies, including uh, those actively already investing and trading in neighboring countries in the region and their Tajik partners. With further facilitation of this process, we are confident that soon various business ideas will be transformed into, into the real project. Dear friends, in 30 years of the robust partnership, Tajikistan and U.S. have jointly made valuable contribution to peace, stability, and sustainable development Recognizing uh, geographical location of Tajikistan and fragile and complex environment in the region, which puts Tajikistan at, at the forefront of countering most challenging current threats. 
And I wish to stress today that the need and the demand for global, regional and country partnership are strong as ever. And uh, we are confident that our continuous bilateral relations will allow us to extend and expand existing partnership between Tajikistan and United States of America for many years to come. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now I want to uh, switch a little bit to um, questions of foreign assistance and non-governmental engagement. Uh, Zora, United States official foreign assistance and non-governmental engagement in Tajikistan has been up and down over the last 30 years, um, ebbing and flowing, and this is true uh, across the region, uh, but during this period of bilateral relations. How important are foreign assistance and people-to-people -people engagements uh, for the relationship between the two countries. Is it turned on? Yeah. Is it on? Okay. Um, thank you for the question. Um, I, I would like to thank uh, all the speakers before because they mentioned the very crucial uh, moments. Is about that Tajikistan had to go through the development of their nation building and country development through more difficult uh, way rather than our neighbors did. We had to go through the civil war, we had to go through the reconstruction, humanitarian uh, uh, aid of, uh, phases and etc. So the country was devastated by civil war and we had to restart actually building unlike our neighbors who were just continuing their existence and they didn't really face the difficulties we actually faced in Tajikistan. So with the help of United States and many other partners in development, Tajikistan gone through uh, smoothly through the peace process and national reconciliation. And actually, if we like look at the 1997 when the peace process started and 2000, we can actually sense, we already sense that there is enough stability to really start with the development uh, projects. And, and that was important to see the role of United States and other donors who actually came uh, to help not only with humanitarian assistance, but also providing the assistance in the development, in development of different institutions, providing the assistance on uh, like first reforms of education, reforms in different other spheres. But also I have to mention is of course support for development of vibrant civil society, which was very important at that time because we were post-conflict coming together, thinking what it is to be done for the country who is in post-conflict situation and post-Soviet as well. They had to really think about what it is the civil, what is vibrant civil society is. Uh, uh, NGO uh, idea come about, like, you know, to organize themselves, the civil society would organize themselves into the uh, initiative groups who would actually come with the ideas and work with the government and the donors and the communities to, to provide different assistance. Um, I think we, I have to mention that from that time onward, there were many different initiatives happening. Uh, women's rights uh, activism started being very crucial in that moment, especially post-war, to really show the importance of addressing the issues of violence against women and actually supporting women professionals to come together in different associations. And we have the role of women legal, League of Women Lawyers very crucial in post-conflict, and they are actually very active now on the addressing issues of violence against women. We also have human rights NGOs who actually started producing a lot of active work uh, uh, on different levels in the inside country, but also on the international level to address issue of, uh, uh, of the issues related to human rights and supporting government, especially to participate in the process of universal periodic review and supporting them on working out the recommendations uh, and etc. So we have been going through different phases of development and we were collaborating all together. Of course, we are not saying that everything was going smooth, but there was collaboration. There was true belief that there is a collaboration which will actually help to move forward, and it did. So we have lots of different organizations 
country gone through the post-Soviet, post-conflict, moving toward market economy, and right now we are in the age of actually digital transformation and building a digital economy, and U.S. assistance is now quite uh, extens uh, extended into the supporting startups, you know, we have new generation of activists who are coming down and actually coming with their vocal voice, what it is to be done, and they want to be really participant on the development of their country, and not country only, but also region. So there is a value added of U.S. Uh, government uh, support for the civil society in Tajikistan, but it's also about other donors who are also uh, supporting uh, civil society, and it would be very good not only support digital transformation, but also keep the eye on supporting classic, uh, classic issues like human rights, women's rights, children's rights, and uh, freedom of expression. Thank you. Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, now I want to turn to Paris, Muhammad Zoda, uh, back in Dushanbe. Um, in addition to our bilateral relationships, uh, the United States engages with Central Asia through the C5 plus one mechanism, uh, which has existed, uh, was, was founded under President Obama uh, and was promoted through the Trump administration and is now supported by the Biden administration. And I think it's hard to find a policy um, that's lasted that long through that many changes in, in U.S. government. Um, so I, I want to ask uh, Parviz, how, how do C5 plus one engagements um, uh, help Central Asian states come together uh, as a region? Um, why doesn't Central Asia have a regional organization like um, many others, the, like the European Union or ASEAN or the Organization of American States or the African Union. How does C5 plus one relationships um, help move the region forward? You, you're muted, you're muted, Barbies. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Uh, dear Mr. Farouk Salim, Donald Du, uh, Mr. Panoshein, and also here we have the Mr. Ali Zoda Farouk Mahmoud as the ambassador of uh, Tajikistan to the United States, their colleagues and distinguished participants. Before uh, answering your uh, question, uh, really we uh, prepared the, uh, <clears throat> here a um, special report for today's occasion for uh, uh, our uh, participants who are taking part here. Uh, that's why at the outset, I would like to thank the organizers for initiating today's timely meeting on the occasion of the 30th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations and uh, between Tajikistan and the United States and cordially congratulate all of us on the occasion of this historical event. On the occasion of this historical event, uh, the uh, founder of Peace and National Unity Leader of Nation, President of the Republic of Tajikistan, His Excellency Mr. Wali Rahman, and President of the United States uh, of America, Joseph Biden, exchanged congratulatory telegrams on the occasion of 30 years anniversary of establishment of diplomatic relations between the two countries. Over the past 30 years, a lot of practical experience and significant achievements have been accumulated in framework of bilateral and multilateral cooperation between our countries. During this time, Tajik-American relations have passed an extraordinary path and reached a high level of cooperation. And today, dynamically developing multi-faced interaction allows us to successfully implement the agreements reached between our countries in various fields. All, all the 30 years of establishment diplomatic relations between our states, close cooperation has been established in the field of non-proliferation, the fight against threat, terrorism, security and multi, uh, military technical cooperation, trade and investment on issues of democracy and human rights, health and education, energy and people-to-people -people cooperation. We should also know the similarity of the position of two countries in solving urgent problems and threats, including Afghan problem, Afghanistan problem and COVID-19, economic recovery, climate change, and many other questions. 
Analyzing the 30 years development of cooperation, it should be noted that the main trend being the rigorous development of bi bilateral and multilateral relations between Tajikistan and the United States. Our countries during this historical period have demonstrated to the entire world community a new approach to solving complex regional problems and issues of bilateral relations. It's expressed with, uh, first of all in active discussion, uh, as well as in wide exchange of views of the parties, the development of common approaches, uh, the formation of common agenda for cooperation for the foreseeable future. We know with particular satisf uh, satisfaction that, that the substantive dialogue at the highest and high levels uh, that is expanding from year to year based on mutual trust, mutual respect and mutual support, which make it possible to achieve significant results in strengthening bilateral cooperation to coordinate effort within the UN, C5 plus one and other international organization and diplomatic formats in solving the most pressing problems of the regional and global agenda. The relationship between Tajikistan and the United States within the UN in traditional build on the principles of mutual trust, friendship and mutual respect. Our cooperation mainly call the support of each other candidacy for various UN electoral bodies and resolutions put forward by both delegations. The government of the Republic of Tajikistan highly values the bilateral cooperation with the United States and stands ready to do its utmost to the deepen uh, the two countries' relations for our common interests. The Republic of Tajikistan strives to develop sustainable and long-term cooperation with the USA. We regard USA as a reliable and constructive long-term partner. To, uh, today we have an experience of mutual beneficial cooperation with USA. Annual bilateral consultation between the two countries uh, serve as a good platform to exchange views on international, regional, and bilateral matters of mutual interest. Regular ABC give us an, uh, the opportunity to uh, plan the development of our relations. We, uh, here we mentioned that uh, already between our countries was signed uh, 34 bilateral documents in the spheres of military, technical cooperation in fight against terrorism, drug trafficking and economy and trade. Tajikistan is open for further strengthening the legal framework, which will open new opportunities for the expansion of, of the cooperation between our countries. It must be stated that Tajik-American relations are at a new historical point. We are confident that our countries will continue close contacts, jointly uh, implement the agreements reached, and in the future, with the framework of Tajik-American cooperation in various areas, it will be dynamically developed and be filled with new rich content, including the implementation of joint infrastructure projects that are of strategic importance for Tajikistan. Despite the close and friendly relations between our countries, the trade between Tajikistan and the U.S. is relatively low. The volume of our bilateral trade in 2020 was $38.1 million. In 2021, uh, it was $44.9 million. And in January uh, till March 2022, reached uh, till uh, $26.6 million, respectively. We have mostly import from the U.S. to Tajikistan within the bilateral trade during this period. In this regard, it's necessary to take joint measures to increase uh, foreign trade and in a balanced and mutual beneficial way. To further enhance trade and relations, it's necessary to create new and up-to-date tools for developing economic trade and investment cooperation, such as investment for a large joint economic and trade shows. The US, uh, the US is the Tajikistan trade partner and we are seeking greater trade uh, engagements with US. Tajikistan is uh, interested in further implementation of training and scholarship programs in the field of international relations, strategic research, management, engineering, information technology, innovation, economy, investment, industry, energy, health care, uh, tourism, etc. Therefore, the Tajik side uh, 
So I would very much appreciate if the American side, in the spirit of a reliable partnership and friendly assistance, allocates scholarship quotes for Tajik students interested in studying the above mentioned uh, specialists in the leading universities of U.S. Uh, also, we uh, can say that the pro, uh, proactively participate uh, Tajikistan in the United States regional initiatives such as C5 Plus, one both in uh, ministerial and working groups, which this year uh, we mark the seventh anniversary of this of its uh, creation. C5 Plus One format has contributed to increasing economic and energy connectivity, uh, mitigating environmental and health challenges addressing security threats and advocating for the full participation of women in all aspects of political, economic, and social life. Tajikistan in co-chair in security working groups, and in this capacity, it, it hosted meetings of this group in 2017, 2019 in Dushanbe, and in uh, 2020 in online format. During these meetings, participants discussed regional country terrorism efforts and the trade a threat of returning foreign fighters, working group projects on countering violent, uh, violent extremism, strengthening the regional cooperation in the fight against security threats and challenges and other relevant issues. Today, the pr uh, prospects of mutual beneficial and close cooperation between the Central Asian states and USA gives uh, a new impetus to further development in the regional cooperation by initiating the implementation of joint projects both for the states of the region and for the USA. Initially, in our opinion, uh, it's urgent to develop a further action plan for our states in this direction uh, that's to come to a common understanding of the topical areas of bilateral cooperation. One of the areas of the friendship and partnership between the Republic of Tajikistan and Central Asian states is cooperation between team tanks of the region. Over the years of independence, the Center for Strategic Research under the President of the Republic of Tajikistan as a leading uh, brain trust of the country established close ties with leading brain trust of the world. Center for Strategic Research uh, carries out scientific research on economic and domestic political issues. Our center is one of the responsible state bodies of the uh, Republic of Tajikistan for implementation of strategy for countering ex extremism and terrorism for 2021 and 25. In, in accordance with the action plan for its implementation, the center intends to conduct an advanced training courses seminars, international conferences, and summer schools on prevention of extremism and terrorism in society. We also plan to conduct a sociological uh, research on the participation of women in extremist and terrorist, terrorist organizations, as well as among the labor uh, migrants. The center may also conduct research uh, and other scientific activities on social economic issues. So we regard it's, uh, it as one of the priority areas of our activity. And here we propose to strengthen uh, scientific and research cooperation between uh, think tanks of Tajikistan and US. At first stage, we invite USIP to establish cooperation with our center. Uh, here we also convince that the Republic of Tajikistan and the United States in close and constructive partnership will be able to successfully interact in the name of sustainable development and prosperity of the peoples of the two countries, achieving lofty goals set as the task of continuing to develop and further strengthen the constructive dialogue between our countries. What, uh, about this, also we hear mention about uh, the question which you ask, uh, Mr. Moderator, that why the Central Asian countries uh, doesn't have such an uh, organization as European Union, as uh, African Union or ASEAN. We hear, uh, firstly, we should say that uh, creation and often uh, international organization, it's a uh, period, it's a process. 
And Central Asian countries nowadays are now already uh, 30 years. They, they are now in the formation of their independence. Uh, that's why we can say that uh, in the process of uh, creation of an organization uh, with the participation of only Central Asian countries, we should say that on April uh, 1994, uh, the Central Asian states uh, was uh, organized such an organization uh, which was named the Central Asian Economic Community. It was uh, signed by a trilateral agreement uh, between Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, and Kazakhstan. But uh, this uh, organization could not fully function as a regional association without participation of other states of Central Asia, uh, including Tajikistan. Uh, with the end of civil war in Tajikistan, uh, in 1998, uh, Tajikistan was uh, joined to this organization. Uh, but the next uh, phase or path of economic integration of the Central Asian countries was the transformation of this Central Asian economic community to a Central Asian cooperation organization, which further uh, deepened relation within the region uh, and uh, was removed all kinds of barriers between the countries of the region. In December 2001, a meeting of President of Central Asia was held in Tashkent, where the proposal to transfer uh, this uh, Central Asian economic community into the organization of Central Asian uh, organization uh, was supported. But the, uh, the agreement on the establishment of this organization was signed in 2002 in Almaty. But the newly created organization uh, could not reach the next stage, solving down in development, which may have been caused by external factors uh, and other objective uh, causes or factors. New stage of integration process in Central Asia, we can uh, say that it was happened after uh, a new uh, government uh, in uh, coming to the power in Uzbekistan. It was a new stage of relation between uh, the countries of Central Asia uh, uh, in this region. The new government of Uzbekistan has set a course for a reapproachment and improvement of relations with neighbors and building friendly and good neighborly relations. And uh, now, uh, this kind of um, cooperation uh, is a consultative meeting of the head of uh, states of Central Asian countries. Uh, first uh, meeting was held uh, in 2018. The second, uh, it, it was in Astana, and second was in uh, in Uzbekistan in 2019, and the next was uh, 2021 in. Uh, Turkmenistan, and we hope that uh, this uh, basic uh, meeting, which is uh, named the consultative meeting of the head of state of Central Asian countries, will uh, be in the near future, uh, kind, uh, and it will be transferred to an uh, organization uh, for the Central uh, Asian countries, but all, now all kind of questions between these countries are uh, solved and considered in framework of this consultative meeting without uh, third parties. Uh, about Central uh, C5 plus one, uh, how this C5 plus one with uh, uh, Russia, with China, with uh, uh, US, uh, as you mentioned, uh, except these countries you mentioned, also we should mention that uh, we uh, Central Asian countries in uh, format of C5 plus one also have such a uh, format with uh, Korea, with Japan, with the European Union, uh, with Italy. And uh, I think that uh, all these uh, actors of international relations with Central Asian countries, they have been uh, their own agenda and uh, really, uh, we should say that uh, if we consider only the US uh, plus C5, here we should uh, mention that if US wants a success 
uh, and help to uh, Central Asian countries, it, uh, it, uh, U.S. should uh, accelerate the process of instit uh, institutionalization of uh, uh, secretariats uh, in framework of C5 plus one, and uh, also I can say that it, uh, U.S. can succeed only with uh, financing in infrastructure and economic projects uh, if financed. Otherwise, other countries, of, uh, I can give an example that China only uh, uh, with uh, this uh, one belt and one road now uh, has already succeeded. That's why we are proposing that for succeeding U U.S. and Central Asian countries uh, and to uh, help Central Asian countries to get together as a region, uh, only the way is to uh, uh, participate in this framework and uh, to uh, realize economic infrastructure and other projects in uh, this region. All right, thank, thank you, you thank you, Parviz. Thank you, Parviz. I want to save some time for. Uh, we're starting to get some questions from the audience uh, online and in person. I want to remind everyone uh, here uh, in the room that you can ask a question um, by uh, writing on a three by five card. Matt, where are we? And online, um, you can you can ask a question using the chat box function located below the video player. And our, our first um, question uh, from the audience is for Ambassador Palmerstein. Uh, and the question is, the global COVID-19 pandemic has had an undeniable effect uh, on diplomatic relations. Uh, what has been revealed about the resilience of, or hindrance to U.S.-Tajik bilateral relations with regards to health and environment issues? John. Well, thank you very much. Uh uh, I, I would say certainly uh, it, uh, the pandemic continues to, uh, to affect us all in, uh, in many ways. Uh, but uh, you know, in terms of our diplomacy, I would say that the, the Biden administration uh, moved very quickly. Uh, we were just talking about the C5 plus one, Secretary Blinken. Uh, uh, his first engagement with the C5 plus one was actually a virtual event due to the pandemic uh, several months after uh, uh, becoming Secretary of State. Uh, and uh, so it's, it really is hard to imagine that, you know, these meetings uh, with the very senior level meetings uh, can occur now uh, because of technology uh, and, and having to deal with the pandemic. Uh, hopefully that will also help us in the future in terms of our uh, fluency with the technology and our ability to, uh, as uh, Parviz was just suggesting, uh, you know, pick up the pace a bit in certain areas. Uh, but um, it, I would say that the, in terms of uh, U.S.-Tajikistan cooperation on uh, combating uh, COVID-19, I, I would say that that has been a real story of resilience and, and success. Uh, Ambassador Liu mentioned the 2.8 million doses that the United States has supplied a vaccine uh, to the uh, people of Tajikistan. Uh, I would make a, a couple points there. One, that's close to 20% of the eligible population, those eligible for vaccines in Tajikistan. So it is really a significant effort. And then I think one of the other speakers alluded to the fact that the government of Tajikistan has moved very effectively in terms of its rollout of the vaccine. And we have a very close partnership there and a number of international organizations, including UNICEF and others, have worked very, very hard to accomplish that. And so I think that's really a, 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 a global achievement. It's an achievement of the Tajik government uh, that, that uh, you know, we were, for example, during our first, uh, once we did, delivered our first tranche of vaccines, we were getting reports within a couple of days that there were mobile vans driving around in the Pamirs, in, in villages, and vaccinating people. And, uh, you know, those of you, for my American colleagues, those of you that have been to Tajikistan, you know, perhaps know that that is quite, a, you know, a, a logistical feat uh, to, to be so quickly out in villages and small cities uh, around the country uh, in very mountainous and difficult uh, areas. 
So um, I think uh, uh, that cooperation has really saved lives and is a credit uh, to my colleagues uh, who work in CDC and USAID and other places as well, because a lot of effort uh, went into that. Uh, and uh, it's not just vaccines, it's laboratory equipment, it's oxygen concentrators, which are being delivered right now to ensure that not just for COVID, but for future, uh, future needs that the, uh, this critical equipment will be in hospitals all around Tajikistan. Uh, and I think I would characterize our cooperation there as absolutely excellent. I just wanted to pick up on a point that uh, uh, Zuhra mentioned on the people-to-people -people ties, because and that is just an incredibly important component of this relationship. And uh, we would be nowhere without NGOs and our, our civil societies, our, our brain trusts, as Parviz said, working together. And I just wanted to mention in terms of COVID, um, we, uh, you know, our, you, you, the medical community in the United States also really stepped up to help Tajikistan. I remember, I'll just tell a quick story here. At the very beginning of the pandemic, I, I turned on the, 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 the television uh, and uh, as we were all trying to figure out what is this COVID-19, what is this going to, to mean for us? And uh, there was a gentleman standing on the street in New York being interviewed by uh, Tajik State TV, and he was a doctor, and he was speaking fluent Persian. My Tajiki, I, I, I'm working on it. It's, uh, it's, it's not where I would like it to be, but I, I could understand enough uh, to, and he spoke for about a half an hour and 40 minutes uh, on the pandemic and on what measures people should be taking and, and, and what people can do in their families to prevent from being infected. And I have to say, it was one of the best explanations that I had heard, uh, you know, in all media uh, on where we were at that point in the pandemic. And this gentleman, his name is Arash Alai. He is a, an Iranian American doctor who's currently working in Southern California. And uh, he uh, played an incredible role, he and his, uh, the, the folks that he is working with in the United States uh, in, in cooperating with uh, the Ministry of Health uh, in Tajikistan uh, to to get the word out and and also save lives. So that 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 is just incredibly important. And I I, I finally had the chance of meeting uh, Dr. Ali uh, a, a few months ago, and I have to say, uh, it, it it is a real pleasure uh, to see that our civil society. Uh, uh, that we are working uh, uh, on all levels and in all ways, uh, expert to expert, when these types of uh, global problems arise, because that's really the only way to do it. But I, I did want to give that particular example uh, of, uh, of that, uh, of that uh, type of cooperation. Um, uh, just very briefly on the uh, uh, environment, uh, because I know that, uh, and I, I would defer to my uh, uh, colleagues uh, from Tajikistan on this question. It is a huge priority, I know, for the government of Tajikistan. Uh, but um, uh, of course, the Biden administration has prioritized uh, climate mitigation and resilience as a national security imperative. And so we're looking for ways that we can continue to work with Tajikistan uh, in that area. Uh, Assistant Secretary Liu mentioned the uh, the highest uh, solar uh, 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 plant in the, in the world, uh, the 200 kilowatt uh, uh, Morgov uh, uh, plant. Uh, but we're also working in a number of other areas as well uh, uh, to uh, you know whether it's hydropower or whether it's also working with farmers uh, on on crops that are uh, uh, climate smart um, agriculture. Uh, crops that can uh, preserve resources and improve yields and contribute to economic growth. Uh, I, if, if we had more time, I'd tell another story about ag agriculture because it, it, it really is one area where over the last uh, uh, decades, uh, the U.S. and uh, Tajikistan have really co cooperated closely, particularly in, in the hot loan area down in the, in the south uh, of the country, but all through the country uh, in terms of uh, our farmers and agricultural experts uh, that have been able to, uh, uh, to, to work closely together uh, on uh, uh, also introducing new crops into Tajikistan as well that have been quite successful, such, such as uh, 
uh, you know, uh, uh, cauliflower and strawberries, uh, uh, strawberry variants from California that have have done have done quite well here. Uh, but um, I won't tell the long story because I know that we're 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 pushed on time. So I'll I'll stop there. Thank you, Gavin. Uh, thanks, John. Just, um, just, just one more. Yes, if, if you allow, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Pomersheim, and uh, I would like to express uh, Tajikistan appreciation to government of the United States of America on, for the on-time support and the providing to Tajikistan uh, vaccines and the uh, necessary equipment. And uh, it's very important. And uh, I would like to say is now situation with uh, uh, coronavirus in Tajikistan Pakistan more or less manageable, and uh, more than 90 percent of population already vaccinated. And the thanks, thanks to government and the United States of America, and uh, including through CDC and the USID, you provide on time uh, assistance. Thank you. Okay, now we have a—I'm uh, going to combine two questions uh, from uh, Ambassador uh, Richard Hoagland. Um, how will Russia's invasion of Ukraine change Tajikistan's multi-vector foreign policy that has tried to balance Russia, China, EU, and the United States? Will Dushanbe seek closer relations with Beijing, Brussels, Washington? And then from Janice uh, Helwick of U.S. Uh, Helsinki Commission, how are the sanctions against Russia uh, that have come from uh, the invasion of uh, Ukraine impacting Tajikistan? Ambassador, would you like to address those? I will try, but uh, yeah, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Hovland. You know situation in the region, in Tajikistan, and uh, of course, uh, take into account our uh, geographical location, and uh, now uh, situation is uh, complex, f fragile, and uh, you would like to say what is now going in in Ukraine is cause is a serious concern and sincere empathy and uh, we are uh, convinced that uh, sustainable peace can be achieved only through the use of political and diplomatic means and uh, uh, Tajikistan welcomes uh, direct negotiation between Russia and the Ukrainian sides and uh, we hope this negotiation in the shortest possible time will bring as a result mutually acceptable to parties and the put to end to hostilities. Uh, very difficult situation and uh, uh, as, as you, you know, we, Tajikistan small small economy and uh, we are very, we suffer a negative impact from the uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, economic uh, uh, suffer uh, impact of pandemic and the uh, and also uh, situation what happened now in, in the region and uh, so uh, we are we are uh, uh, as I say uh, hope uh, this direct negotiation uh, will bring result uh, mutual uh, acceptable parties and uh, so uh, what I can say is uh, high level delegation Tajik from Tajikistan will arrive on Monday to Washington and uh, uh, we, they went to uh, make negotiation with uh, uh, President of World Bank, uh, IMF, and uh, in Treasury Department, in uh, Fed Reserve. So uh, our, our, our party very closely work on uh, the, uh, with the uh, American side. Uh, what is important is, uh, Mr. Hoagland, is what we started before uh, for strengthening, uh, starting for strengthening our uh, independence uh, and uh, our border and uh, development and implementing reform in education and health. We don't should stop this. We should continue this, and uh, even, even on that time, it needs more, more stronger steps 
by uh, U.S. government in the Tajikistan in the region. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, I want to ask a slightly different question um, that I think uh, everyone in our panel can, can respond to, but I'll start with you, Zura. Um, what do ordinary people in Tajikistan in the United States actually know about each other? Um, and what could be done to improve those stereotypes uh, to make them more realistic? Do you have any thoughts on that? Well, uh, I think, is it on, right? Yeah. Uh, um, I think we have to mention that there is a saying in Tajikistan that uh, the mountains do not reach each other, but people do. Hmm. So uh, it's all about communicating closer. Uh, to have shared interest, uh, to really create mutual understanding. Uh, when it comes to, you know, we mentioned about pandemic that now the technology allows to use that to really continue uh, conversations and dialogues and deliberations about the issues of mutual interest. Uh, that should be applied because uh, during 30 years we learned from each other from the position of post-Soviet or Soviet vision on what America is, and we developed our own vision of what America is. And it's not really the same. Uh, the population has their own take on what the United States represent, either it's West or it's good or it's evil or it's you know, many, it's a spectrum of the things. But because there was less communication between people and there was less program on public diplomacy or actually people-to-people -people diplomacy, and with the pandemic, with all respect to digital transformation and I'm working on it, I still think that human-to-human -human, uh, communication brings that uh, feeling of trust that people can create the trust among each other. Shall we have more programs which would be mutually uh, uh, beneficial, that US, United States uh, citizens would know more about Tajikistan? And of course, everyone thinks about going to mountains, uh, you know, it's tourism development, uh, mm -hmm. cultural programs, and etc. And this is very good to have cultural programs and tourism development, but it's also very important, and I actually uh, agree with the, uh, 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 my colleague here, to create the think tanks, uh, the, the mutual collaboration between think tanks, to create mutual, you know, some sort of brain sharing, uh, brainstorming about the issues which are very important. Things are changed, not only after Ukrainian uh, war, war in Ukraine, but things changed a little bit even before, after ISIS, uh, you know, development and et cetera. And so these conversations, deliberations, would be very important. With the Ukrainian impact is, it's actually very dramatic uh, in post-Soviet countries, as you may think. The, the division of uh, Sotsum, the population about pro and con uh, of this, is it true? Uh, like, you know, uh, uh, the, there are many people who support, many people who don't support. Uh, and they, they have their own, you know, vision of what it is, uh, what they think. But also <coughs> we have labor migrants in Russia. And we, we have been uh, hearing from Asian Development Bank about uh, the remittances fallout uh, because economy of Russia is not doing well. And people are also confused in the same time. What it is the truth coming on social media, how they have to distinguish the correct uh, news and fake news, what it is they should know, how they should behave. Very complex situation. It's not only in Tajikistan, but in uh, with my I've been talking with my colleagues in Central Asian Caucasus, they have the same dilemmas and the same challenges. So it means that the, what is next in the next 30 years, starting with this particular dilemma and chaos in our thinking and our vision, what is future like is going to be next uh, 10 years. Uh, so I think it's a time of good brainstorming on different levels among the governments, 
among civil society and the governments, among businesses, and among the citizens uh, of different countries, the Tajikistan and the United States inclusive. Yeah, thank you. I, I have been particularly worried about social media um, in the context of Central Asia over the last few years, um, given how um, easy it is to spread disinformation and and how how poorly controlled and managed social media is. Social media is a very unique, uh, you know, dimension in our lives. First, it's very elite because of the access to internet not really spread throughout of the population in this country. Also, the content is very limited in the local languages. It's mainly in Russian, which is accessible for our people. And it's because of that situation, we cannot really make a judgment on who are, are they representing the whole public opinion, uh, the entire public opinion? Uh, is it the reflection of the uh, entire population's opinion in it? So this uh, social media, in the say, from one hand, you may find a very good resources of information, which will help to, for you to make a judgment. But from the other hand, it also fuels some sort of different ideas, which makes people to be very much confused. And it's not only in, in, in our part of the world, it's inclusive of United yes, of States. You, I mean, uh, I, I've been reading some of the stuff here. It's, it's very uh, difficult, but it comes to a point that what it is to be done, and it's not only about young people, it's about adults as well. Uh, critical thinking, uh, very strong critical thinking skills, which will help you to define what it is good and what it is not very good, and how you behave in that regard, and how you have your own citizen's position. So critical thinking would be very important to be actually enhanced in our country as well as you know, on this uh, school level, on, on, on different other levels that would be given the citizens globally, actually, resilience to the new challenges that they're going to face ne next decades. It's yeah. not, it's just starting. Um, John, did you want to respond to the question about mutual uh, perceptions and, and, and what we can do to, 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 to improve those? That's a, that's a freebie for public diplomacy, I guess, but. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Uh, just very briefly, uh, uh, yeah, I think um, uh, Zura really covered it well. I agree uh, uh, with uh, uh, Zura with your excellent, excellent points on this. Uh, I, I, I would just note, yeah, the, the, the pandemic has really impacted this as well because tourist arrivals, including from the United States, were way, way up my first year here before the pandemic hit. And I think what tourism does and it, it, in addition to just letting people see the beauty, the beauty of the country, like uh, or a country like Tajikistan, right, with the mountains and everything, is that leads to connections that start over time, and uh, and, and 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 you get interested in the in the in the economy and the, and, the, and the way people are living and, and how you know how things could 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 happen. Uh, and uh, and then on the educational front, of course, our programs were massively impacted in terms of the ability to send Tajiks to the U.S., in terms of our ability to bring Fulbrighters and others into uh, Tajikistan. Uh, but I, you know, I think we need to get. We're 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 working very hard now, and that traffic is is uh, moving back uh, rapidly uh, to a uh, to a decent pace. And I'm extremely extremely happy about that, as are many of my colleagues here at Embassy Dushan Bay. Uh, and uh, we're we're looking to even ramp up and see where we can uh, where where we can improve there. Uh, it's uh, uh, and as and certainly as uh, you, you know, as we come out of the pandemic, uh, you know, seeing uh, seeing more Americans over here as well. Uh, I think uh, uh, we look forward to that uh, as well. On the you know whether it's uh, in terms of educational programs or in terms of uh, you know I was mentioning the agriculture. We have a number of experts coming in there. Uh, we have uh, 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 now uh, restored uh, you know concerts. Uh, we have a, a U.S. band coming in that's going to be touring the country. So these are the types of things that you know sort of in normal times you know you can sometimes uh, you, uh, you know. Uh, uh, just assume this will all continue, but uh, as we now know, 
Uh, you know, when we lose these opportunities, we lose an incredible amount. And uh, so um, I think uh, I, I think that's uh, uh, that's something that we're going to be uh, working on here uh, in Dushanbe uh, uh, in in the months ahead. Thanks. And as a final question, I'm going to combine two, uh, one from Sebastian Peyros, uh from the Central Asia Program at George Washington University and from uh, Brianna Todd of the Department of Defense, which are uh, very similar. Um, if you could ask one thing of the U.S., uh, what would it be? Or are there any sectors for cooperation in which Tajikistan would like the United States to be more involved? Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, one sector is very important uh, because, uh, uh, of course, I should mention uh, about uh, our excellent experience and cooperation with the United States of America on the uh, fighting uh, terrorism, extremism, drug and arms trafficking, and uh, crime, and uh, as well as illegal migration, uh, it's very important to continue. Even even uh, we should consider if uh, we can consider about uh, 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 implementing a broader program. In the same time, uh, I should mention is uh, very important on this stage when when some people, uh, of course, uh, uh, pessimistic and uh, of course uh, it's unpredictable situation or very quick changing situation in the world in the region. So it's very difficult to make some uh, decision uh, and uh, take into account taking uh, my, my experience in the past. I remember a crisis 2008-2009, if you remember, it was almost a finance economic crisis. But now we also in the crisis, now uh, it's everywhere, uh, at least in our region, we are suffer negative impact, pandemic, unpredictable situation. Uh, in, in such a situation, uh, it's uh, in our understanding that we now very closely uh, uh, collaborate in the United States of America to find opportunity to uh, make better investment climate and attract attract uh, uh, investors from United States, European Union to region to Tajikistan and it's very important when when it's a so pessimistic situation it's very important economic part of policy we should bring to a head and uh, because it's important to 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 see some success solution agreement uh, signing uh, uh, trade and uh, it, it's very important on this stage and uh, we hope as I said before in Tajikistan we can consider together with the United States of America to diversifying our portfolio economic portfolio trade portfolio with, with uh, separate countries and the portfolio on the investment also diversifying this uh, structure of investment. It's very important. And in this stage, very important, of course, uh, different approach on different countries, on investment, on trades. Some countries put uh, some conditions. Some countries without any conditions just would like to enter and to cover all market. So different approach, but uh, take into account uh, your experience and uh, your, your uh, possibility and uh, it's important to to uh, consider consider uh, of course Tajikistan maybe sometimes we can see far from the United States but consider how we can uh, strengthen collaboration in one sector in economic trade and investment thank you we are out of time I want to thank uh, our panel uh, for participating and uh, Ambassador Parmashine for staying up late uh, to, uh, to, to, to be here today uh, and, and for you for attending in person. Um, I want to thank um, the audience for great questions and we hope to see you uh, at our future events. Thank you.